Also new in Blender 2.66 are several different modifiers, namely the UV Warp modifier, the Laplacian Smooth modifier, and the Mesh Cache modifier. And I'm gonna give you a quick demo of each of these. Let's first start with the UV Warp. The UV Warp is pretty cool. And basically it allows us to uh, distort or alter or transform the UVs of an object based on two other objects. So in this case, I have a simple plane that is UV unwrapped. I've just got a, U a color grid mapped to that image. And then inside my UV warp modifier, which you can find right here, I then have two objects, UV1 and UV2. And these two objects give us a basically a two and, or excuse me, a from and a two. And then I can set the axes on which they're gonna deform right here. And just to very quickly demo what this does is if I take this object, I move it along the Y or the X axis, you can immediately see what it does. It basically just offsets my UVs based on the transform. Now, if I move it along the Z axis, it doesn't do anything unless I happen to set this to the Z axis and then it will move it. So these define the, the axis that is going to be manipulated within the 3D viewport. And so I can just move this around I can rotate it, I can rotate it either direction around the Z axis. And so if you think of, if I rotate this around the Z axis, it's basically the same thing as rotating it like this. If I rotate it around the X or the Y axis, it's essentially like rotating it um, like this in the 3D view, but imagine that this were then rotating it down like this. So it's essentially scaling it in either direction. And you should be able to see this mimicked pretty closely if we do this it's essentially just squashing them down in each direction or squashing them up. Then on this one, if I move this object, it's basically starting from here and then kind of moving it like this. So if I move upwards like this, basically it's just taking the UVs and kind of moving them up in that general direction. Same thing if I then rotate this, if I rotate around the x-axis, it does basically the exact same thing as this. If I rotate around the y-axis, it kind of shifts it and scales it. And then if I rotate around the z-axis, it's basically rotating it as if this object or the UVs of this object were being rotated from say like this point here. And if we just go over and enable the 3D or 2D cursor, if I rotate it like this, that's essentially the same thing that's happening here because it's starting here and then it's going here. So as I rotate this, then it's just kind of shifting it around in that direction. So this can seem a little bit funky to mess with, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it's really, really cool. And you could use this for all kinds of things. You could use this for 2D texture animation. So like if you have say like a 2D lip sync animation of you know a mouth character or something like that, of like a simple cartoon character, you could be uh, just animating the offset here as it zooms by the frames to make it look like it's animated. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different things that you could do with that. So this is a really, really handy modifier that allows us to do some pretty cool things. Next, we have the, the uh, Laplacian Smooth modifier. And the Laplacian Smooth modifier is pretty cool. Basically, what it allows us to do, for one, you can see it right here. You can also find it right here, Laplacian Smooth. And basically, it allows us to smooth out the surface and or exaggerate the surface. So if I, let's just take this back to zero and I increase the factor to one and then I just slide this up. You can see it's kind of smoothing out the surface and doing some funky things. And this is, this can be really cool for certain things. In this case, it's a little bit funky. Um, I do encourage you to read the release notes and the documentation on it to see some uh, case studies of where it's particularly helpful, but it's pretty sweet. Uh, we do have full control over the individual axes. We can turn borders on or off. So basically it keeps the borders or not. Uh, and then we also have the ability to preserve the volume and or normalize the entire thing. So if I just now just increase this, you know, we can see it does something funky like that. But where it's particularly cool is when we go negative because it allows us to basically exaggerate features. So let's just go back to normalize and I'm just gonna set this to say negative 150. And almost immediately, we've essentially created a caricature of Suzanne here. And this is even cooler though, when we begin defining it based on a vertex group. So for example, if I set a vertex group to the jaw, so this jaw vertex group just basically has all of these vertices assigned to it. 
and I go in and I just define this jaw as the vertex group. It's only going to apply the Laplacian smooth to that. So it's going to exaggerate the jaw, immediately giving me like cool character controls. So maybe I go in here and maybe I'll select, you know, one of the ears as well. And I'm not gonna get too exact, we'll just do something like that. And I'm going to add this to the jaw vertex group. I'll assign that and immediately that just scales up. So you could use this, you know, you can animate this value as well. So you could just take this down so go to, you know, zero or whatever, and then animate that up if you wanted to say, like, exaggerate the ears growing or something like that. You know, there's all kinds of fun things that you could do to exaggerate your model here. Or I can go in, if I exaggerate just the head, then the jaw stays in place and everything else grows. And it's, you know, I can't get into the details of how it works, but you can do that, you know, via the documentation. Because again, you know, it, it can be a little bit technical, but definitely jump into the documentation and read through it because it's really, really cool. And one of the examples they give in here is using, you know, using it as a character thing to exaggerate, say, the feet or the back legs of this camel or just the head or all kinds of different things to really get some some really cool caricatures without having to actually manually do it. Uh, the next modifier that we've got is the mesh cache modifier. And the mesh cache modifier is pretty cool, particularly for animators, when you're either reading data from a uh, from another file or from a from another software. So let's say somebody uh, creates a a shape key animation in Maya, say something like like this. And that shape key animation is then exported out and you then need to read that data. Well, not all formats can read shape keys and such. Uh, there are several that can, including uh, Collada in 2.66 can now read shape keys. Uh, and then there's also a format called MDD, which is what we're gonna use today. And that's called the, it's the new tech uh, point cache format, I believe. And basically what the uh, mesh cache modifier allows us to do is take data such as this, export it out to an MDD, which we're going to go ahead and do right now. So we'll just go to add-ons. We're just going to search for new tech. We can see new tech MDD format. This is included with Blender. I just enable it. And we're going to select our object here and we're going to go to file and export. And by the way, just real quick to show you what this is, is I just took the Laplacian smooth uh, result. I applied it as a shape key and then I animated the value of that shape key from frame one to 100 going from zero to one. And so it's just a very, very simple animation. And so we just go to file and export and a uh, light wave point cache MDD. So we'll go to export. I'm just going to choose Suzanne morph and we'll, we're going to do 24 frames per second. Our start frame is one. Our end frame is 100. We'll click export MDD. And that's basically just going to export each frame of this animation from one to 100 and the mesh at each one of those frames. So now what I can do, let's just go in, let's just add in another mesh. Let's just add in a monkey. So we'll just have a duplicate monkey here. And now let's say I want to take that animation and I want to replicate it over here. Well, there's all kinds of different ways that you could do that. But when it's a shape key animation, that can become much trickier particularly, you know, if we're importing from other applications and things like that, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things that can be a pain. And particularly if we want to then change those animations. So let's just assume that we want to instance this animation really easily. Well, we just take our monkey here, we go over to the modifiers and we click add modifier and mesh cache. This mesh cache modifier then allows me to use either an MDD file or a PC2. Uh, in this case, we just exported an MDD. So we're going to choose MDD. Let's load it in. So we'll just go in here. We just sent it to export. We'll choose Suzanne Morph and we'll click accept. And now we can see, first of all, we have a problem that the vertex count doesn't match. And this is because this, mo this model was exported with a subsurf at level two. So let's just add in a subsurf modifier and move that above. And as soon as we increase the count to two, the vertex count should match. Basically, the vertex count mismatch just means that this, this one does not have the exact same number of vertices as this one. And so it's not able to uh, apply that data. So if we just increase this to two, then it matches exactly, and now it works. Now you'll notice that immediately my, my monkey rotated. And the reason for that is most formats, such as MDD, OBJ, etc., have the axes directions built in. And in this case, those axes directions do not correspond to the same thing as Blender, which is why we then have the ability to change the axis down here. So in this case, my forward up axis 
um, I want to be Z. And I want this one to be, I think, let's see, negative Y, I believe. Uh, nope, not negative Y. Let's try positive Y. Okay, so now it's facing forward, but now it's backwards. So let's try negative Z right here. There we go. So negative Z and positive Y then gives me the correct orientation. Uh, and we can also then flip any one of these axes if we wish. In this case, I'm not going to worry about that. And now if I just simply hit Alt A, we can see that these are playing back. So this is reading the, the animation file from here. I haven't keyframed anything on this. This mesh has no shape keys, nothing. It's just grabbing this data right here. So you could go in, you could just duplicate this object a whole bunch of times, and now you have all of those models using the exact same animation of the shape keys, and yet it's just one animation file controlled by this. So if I ever wanted to go in and exaggerate those, let's say, for example... Um, I add in another shape key here, and I'm going to just take this. I'm going to turn on proportional editing. I'm going to pull this way up, something like this. Just go real exaggerated. And at frame one, I'm going to insert a keyframe here. So I'll hit I, and then all the way at frame 100, I'm going to take this all the way up and go I as well. And now I'm going to re-export this as an MDD. Export MDD from 1 to 100. Export, take just a moment, and then as soon as it's done, you can immediately see it's been applied to all of these because now they're reloading that file, and there we go. So this is really, really cool and very, very valuable. Now, I'm sure that someone that's an experienced animator could give you even more reasons why this is particularly valuable, but say, for example, uh, if you wanted to, if you have an animator that's working on your team, say working in Maya, and then you're working in Blender, and you need to get shape key information from one to the other, you can have your artist working in Maya just export these out as an MDD, and then you can import them no problem. So this makes it really, really easy to share animation data much simpler and keep it all as a modifier. Because remember, there's no animation actually applied to these. It's just a modifier, so it makes it really, really easy. And there's other settings that you can adjust here. You can adjust the frame mapping, the time, the scene, etc. You can adjust the interpolation, whatnot. Uh, I'm not going to get into those because, again, it's just kind of an overview. So there you have it. That's the mesh cache modifier, the UV warp modifier and the Laplacian smooth.